So what I would say to someone who's considering getting into milling is just go for it because I was a little bit intimidated to get started and I've loved every minute of it. I absolutely fell in love with creating my own lumber from trees on my own property. Yeah, I'm Brock from Rock Hill Farms on YouTube. I'm a full-time content creator focused on equipment and anything to do with working outdoors. I got my Woodland Mill sawmill about a year ago, and that's been one of the best decisions I've made. My name's Rick. I am a full-time firefighter and EMT, and I am a part-time Sawyer. I got my mill about three years ago, right after COVID and I've been mo milling part-time ever since then. So I kind of got interested in woodworking as a kid. Like my grandfather used to make these wooden chairs with like wooden uh, wicker seats. Kind of everyone in my family has one and they've been passed down. And my grandfather had a, um, a big campground up in Maine. So we would go up there pretty much every weekend during the summer as kids. You would get to see the beauty of nature and trees and we would be building decks and kind of keeping up with the campground and then as an adult I kind of really I had some really bad insomnia so at night I would just fall down these like YouTube rabbit holes started watching all these woodworking videos and I was in this tiny little 600 square foot apartment basically I got the house that I'm in now and we had finally for the first time had a yard and I had the shed that I could work out of and so I started doing projects, but the shed is only 10 by 12. So then I started doing little cutting boards and then I started doing hand painted, hand stained cornhole boards. COVID hit and wood prices just absolutely skyrocketed out of control. That was preventing me from doing a lot of the things that I wanted to do. And then a tree came down in the side of my yard during one of the storms and I was like, all right, I'm going to turn this into some lumber that I can use. So I went out and I bought an Alaskan mill. I had my chainsaw and I bought a tiny little Alaskan mill and tried to hack through this 30 inch pine that <laughs> fell down. It was the first time I had ever done anything. So I kind of struggled through milling for the first couple of trees. And then I had a couple more that came down, but I loved it. I absolutely fell in love with creating my own lumber from trees on my own property. So then I looked into getting a mill and I found Woodland Mills and they had pretty much all the features that I wanted and a great entry price. So I pulled the trigger on the 130 Max and I haven't looked back since. So the start of my story is pretty similar to yours. When I was a kid, my grandparents were homesteaders. Before that was cool. You know, neither one of them ever had a, a job. They had a sawmill, they sold firewood, they raised a gigantic garden and sold produce. And when I was a teenager, they started a cabinet shop and they built custom cabinets for people. And my job at 10, 12 years old was to stand on the other side of the table saw, the other side of the planer and catch the boards. When we moved out onto this property that has 20 acres with half of it being wooded and it's got this big shop building on it, and I'm a little older, I started looking at the way my parents and grandparents did things and thinking there was really a lot of wisdom in that. Then I did the same thing you did and started with a chainsaw mill and found out that while I liked producing the wood, it was pretty miserable. Yeah, I just said, this isn't for me. And that's why I ended up with a bandsaw mill and I just love running it. And then as far as woodworking, my Father's now in his 60s and he still has that equipment, but he doesn't use it a whole lot. And he doesn't have as big or, or nice of a shop as I do. So we decided to bring all his um, industrial, in some cases, woodworking equipment here. But I really take a lot of enjoyment. Like I made my daughter a kitchen table. And whenever I deliver something like that to, to the person I made it for, I can start by saying, So here's your table. This started as a tree that I cut down myself and then everything from a standing tree to what you see, I did myself and that's really rewarding. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite parts about the mill and milling for customers is you get to save these trees that 
either come down in storms or they need to come down for whatever reason. But these people grew up with them or they planted them themselves or they've just been part of their family forever. And you get to turn that tree into lumber that they can use and keep it going, pass it down for generations and just turn it into beautiful things. I'm just curious what kind of woodworking setup you currently have. So then, yeah, for the woodworking part of it, um, I've st I still have that small little shed, but everything is on wheels. I have a foldable miter saw. I have a fold foldable table saw. Like, I don't have a tractor. I don't have a skid steer. I don't have forklifts or anything like that. I literally have to hand roll all of my logs up onto the mill. I have the ramp and the winch kit, but I'm still rolling them up by hand hand unloading them hand stacking them so that they can dry so yeah everything that i have has to be portable so i have a big shop and i was very lucky to inherit some some nice woodworking equipment but i still completely relate to the guy who doesn't have any space because i'm running a the woodland mills rebuild program out of this shop and i do tractor maintenance in here and I have a lot of different things that occupy this space. So I can't just set up a woodworking shop. This could be an amazing woodworking shop, but I can't just dedicate that space to a planer that I use two or three times a month. I'm in the process right now of putting everything onto custom pallets that my pallet jack can pack my entire shop into a space that's like eight by 10 and then just roll it all out when I'm ready to do woodworking. So what are you primarily using the mill for? Are you doing this for woodworking projects? Are you trying to build something that you can store and stuff like that? Or So when I got the sawmill, I'm lucky enough that I have a Quonset hut, which is you know the dome-shaped metal building. It's currently open on both ends, but I'm able to put the mill in there, and it's not rained on and it's protected, but it's not an ideal setup. And so the first thing I wanted to do when I got the mill is build a custom building just for the mill that's proportioned just right and gives me a clean workflow and a space to store some lumber. But it takes a lot of lumber to build a sawmill shed. So I've been trying to accumulate wood for that. Then yeah. once that project's done, I want to do custom woodworking. I will sell lumber if someone wants to buy it, although I'm not counting on that as like a main revenue source. and I do a lot of just different building projects. Project-wise, um, I've done a bunch of epoxy river tables because that's kind of what got me interested in it. And I was cutting the live edge slabs. I put out a couple of videos just showing me milling the trees that fell down on my property. And people were like, oh, hey, could you come and do that for me? So I'll, it kind of snowballed out of control and then I've put out some ads since then. So most of my milling has actually been for other people who have trees that they want cut into slabs. I'm glad you mentioned the epoxy table. That's a big thing yeah. that I'm putting a lot of thought into. Yeah. I had someone bring me a giant half rotten cherry trunk and they yeah. wanted me to cut it up for a mantle for them. We cut it up. He's like, it's got too many holes in it. I can't use this for a mantle. And I was trying to convince him he still could. But he's like, no, you can keep it if you want it. So I've got yeah. a bunch of like two inch thick cherry, 14 inches wide, mm -hmm. maybe like six of them. And I want to make a full size epoxy river table, but I've never done anything with epoxy. Yeah, so if I, I've done a bunch, so if I could offer anything, definitely start with something like a set of coasters or a cutting board or something small, because there is kind of a learning curve that just little things, no matter how many videos you watch, it's just, you'll learn a lot every time you do it. So I would try a couple of small projects before I jumped into anything big. One of the big things that I didn't know before really, I knew a, a bit about it, but drying lumber is a huge thing. Um, I kind of started with my Alaskan mill with the tree that fell down. I was like, oh, sweet. I'm just going to mill this up and I'll make a table out of it next week and I'll be fine. That's just not how it goes. So if you're getting into it, I would definitely think about how you're going to dry your lumber, whether you're going to air dry it in the back of your yard or... If you know someone with a kiln to put it in there to 
um, speed up the process. But yeah, so when you get a mill, you just throw a log on there and you start cutting it, and you're like victory. <laughs> and you, if you don't handle it properly and you don't dry it properly, you're sitting there looking at it and you're going, "This isn't really that usable. It's got to be flattened and everything else." So you got to make sure that you do have a plan for how you're going to dry it. It just needs to be stacked and stickered properly where it's got air movement under and in between the layers. You have to think if you want one by material, you have to cut it an inch and a quarter so that when it shrinks, it's an inch and you can plane it and it's seven eighths. You've got to be thinking ahead that way, or you end up with this big stack of wood that you're proud of, but it's not going to work for your next project. Yeah. You can always, go down with the size you can't ever put it back on once it's cut so yeah definitely overcut whatever you need you you don't keep a lot of lumber on your property right because you're uh, working mostly for other people don't ask my wife that because the, the stacks are getting out of control at this point uh we have a little over one acre but it's all wooded so i kind of cut out a space in the woods out out back um and then i got a ton of cinder blocks that i just put down i leveled out what do you use as a reference for determining what lumber is worth? I've got some really nice lumber that I've been saving for special projects. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I've got three inch thick, 18 inch wide, 12 foot long walnut. That's yep. perfectly dry. And like, I know that's worth money, that's but I have no idea lot. what to charge. I kind of just go, I have a couple of, people who sell wood around here um there's a couple of slab dealers but mostly um hardwood dealers so i kind of just reference what they're getting for a board foot from them i kind of just research it through i don't know facebook marketplace places like that see what other people are getting and kind of just get the average price from all of that you, th you can always bring the price down if it doesn't sell it's hard to bump it up if you are underselling it so as far as the learning curve it feels like maybe i should have a list of things that oh i wish i had known this sooner but really what i learned is not to be intimidated by it because i thought this would be this really difficult thing and i wasn't sure if i'd you know know how to do it and Man, you mill two logs and you're just like, I'm ready. I'm good to go. Every yard tree has metal in it. If the tree is from someone's yard, there is metal somewhere in that tree. Whether they put it there or it was a bird house 50 years ago, there's metal in every yard tree that I've ever worked with. Did so, you use a metal detector to, to pre-check that? That's, I got to get one. Um, I kind of just go by like staining patterns at this point. I've only hit two things total. One was in was not in a tree. It was in a railroad tie, and that's that more to be expected. And the <laughs> other was just a little bitty bullet, and it didn't make a noise or tear up my blade. Uh, hmm. You just saw it when you pulled the board off. So I've been really fortunate to not hit much. If I had to give someone advice is make sure that you have a plan for how you're going to handle the logs. because. Everyone, when you talk to them, has the same mindset I did, is I want to get the biggest mill I can get so I can handle the biggest logs. Well, mine's the 30-inch, the 30 max, can handle a 30-inch log. Have you given much thought to what a 30-inch diameter, 15-foot log weighs? If it's yeah. oak, you're looking at like 5,000 pounds. Easily. Like, yep. <laughs> and if you don't have a piece of equipment to turn the logs and most of the trees on your property aren't that big, you might not need that big of a mill. I'm actually going to go the opposite way with that. And I'm going to say I would size up from what you think you might need because I got the 30 max, but I only got the 10 foot bed. And I was like, ah, 10 feet, like what the heck am I going to do? I can't move anything more than 10 feet anyway. I am constantly kicking myself that I didn't get the extension to put on it because I'm I have to cut everything down below 10 feet. And there's been times when I needed 12 foot. I, I got a lot of beams that people wanted cut, but they want 12, 16 foot beams. And I just can't do that. Uh, there's been a few times where I was looking at it and I've had people who actually a lot will 
message me or email me and say, what size mill do I need? And I don't always recommend they get the biggest mill. I said, do you have something to turn these? Do you have something to load these with? Yeah. And if you don't, then I'm not sure, you know, and it's the trees that are, you have access to. But I definitely think on length, but on the diameter, it's going to depend on your situation probably. Do you have your mill setting up elevated or is it down at ground level? Uh, it's, a, it's up on the trailer. So, yeah, it's about. Oh, yeah, you have the woodlander. Yeah. I originally set mine on a custom built stand that was even taller than the trailer. Oh, really? Wow. Well. <laughs> so when I ordered my mill, I look at Woodland Mills and they have a full range of just about any kind of accessory you could want. And I look at them and I say, is that useful? Is this useful? And it's hard to know if you don't have milling experience. One thing I didn't think I would want that I'm really glad I now have is a power head to raise okay. and lower the mill. Yeah. I thought. <laughs> How lazy am I that I can't crank a handle? Well, it slows you down and it's extra work. And I set my mill up high where it's not as at a comfortable position as much as when you have it down lower. couple things. One thing I absolutely would have gotten, and I, I made my own, but but I'd much rather, rather have the one from Woodland Mills, is a toe jack for one end so yeah. that you can level your log. You have to be able to level your log in some way. And I put a piece of wood and a little uh, scissor jack but it's not completely effective because I can't move it side to side to center it on the log. Yeah, I would definitely, I'm looking into getting one of those tow boards right now because I'm still shoving a piece of wood under one end to kind of even it out over the course of the log too. But um, the Cantook, I had a couple of cheaper ones. That I got one off Amazon. I uh, got one from another place. But the one from Woodland Mills is the only one that survived. Basically, all my other ones have bent. One thing you got to make a decision on as soon as you get a mill is what I'm gonna what am I gonna do with the sawdust? There's different options. You can just let it pile up on the ground behind your mill, depending on where you're at, and then shovel it out. Mine's inside the building. I don't want that dust accumulating back there. But what's worked just fine for me is I put a, a hook into the side of the mill head. Just drilled one little hole, put a hook in there and hang a bucket on it. And two or three times a log, I take that bucket around the outside and dump it. And that's been really convenient for me. It catches like 95% of the sawdust. It's crazy how, much, how effective that is. So what I would say to someone who's considering getting into milling is just go for it. Because I was a little bit intimidated to get started and I've loved every minute of it. It's been a very rewarding thing. And... Personally, I went around and tested a ton of different brands of sawmills. I visited a lot of sawmill owners to try to make an educated decision. And I'm very happy with the decision to go with Woodland Mills. I think for your cutting capacity and features, you're not gonna find a mill at a better price. You know, once you get it, just have a plan in mind for what you wanna do with the lumber. And Know that for rough framing, you can use the lumber immediately, but if you're making furniture, you're gonna have to allow it to time to dry. But other than that, it's not something to be scared of or intimidated by. Yeah, so yeah, if you're thinking about getting into milling, like Brock was saying, definitely do it because you are already interested in it. You're gonna love this. Cutting into your own trees, making your own lumber, you're gonna absolutely fall in love with having a mill and i would recommend it to anybody and if you mill for yourself you're gonna have basically an unlimited supply of lumber <laughs> that in this economy like it, wood is very expensive so it will more than pay for itself very quickly and if you don't have an unlimited supply of lumber there is an unlimited supply of people who will pay you to mill their wood which is kind of where I fall into. So there's definitely a place for it and you can make that money back very, very quickly. And it's doing something that I love. And I think if you're thinking about it, you're probably like us. You enjoy woodworking, you enjoy cutting into a log, using trees that normally wouldn't be used and just finding a purpose for all of this stuff.